Folks, if you have been ignoring the whales, you may just want to sit back and reevaluate. Now, I've been telling you that we can listen to the words that they say, but more importantly, we need to watch what they're doing. They have ears where we don't. They have information quicker than we can get. They act on this. And then they have to let the public know every three months with their filings, and we get to see what's going on. Now, I brought to you yesterday that old Michael Burry is probably out there trying to make the next Big Short Part 2, possibly with these moves he's making. And we talked about that. And, of course, Warren Buffett moving more into cash, loading up billions into cash securities when we know he likes to have his money working for him, not just getting the interest off a of treasury. But here we are. He's making those moves. I showed you a lot of the big major financials out there loading up on a possible bear market. And I'm telling you, if they thought everything was hunky-dory, even though their analysts are telling them they are, then why are they not loading the boat with call options? They could be doing straddles, and they could, but the straddles I'm seeing for the ones I showed you, they're bearish straddles not bullish straddles. If they thought the markets were going to go higher, yeah, they can have some insurance. I can hear some of you out there right now. Well, Mo, they can they can have put and call options and yeah, but they're bearish. They have it set up as a bearish move. They can protect their gains and be set up to make more money moving up, but that's not how they're playing it. And if you look at it and you look at it closely, you can see exactly what's going on. And I got to tell you, folks, we need to look because the banking industry right now is looking scary. This might be the biggest move for us to short going forward right now is, you know, and this is tough. I'm going to tell you this right now because the Treasury, the Fed, everybody rushes in to save the banking industry. But right now you have Moody's uh, and a lot of things we're going to look at in this video telling us maybe where the next big short is. And maybe Michael Burry was right because he unloaded all his banks. And now you're seeing these warnings. Was he ahead of the game perfectly? I'm starting to think so. And I know everybody, there's a lot of people, oh, a broken clock's right twice, twice a day. And that's what they say about Burry. But I got to tell you, he seems to be on it this time. And uh, so a couple of other things. I saw people talking about it. They had some questions. They said the 1.6 billion in options. He didn't put 1.6 billion in to buy options. He bought 1.6 billion worth of options, okay? That doesn't mean he paid 1.6 billion, folks. I thought that went without saying for those who understood options, but for those who do not, at, let me let me make sure you understand. He didn't take his money of 1.6 billion and buy them. He would have a whole lot higher than what he has now if he did. So, but he did make the move, all right? And that's the big point is that he loaded up because he sees bad things coming. I haven't seen him do this uh, before that I can remember. And so seeing this was a real eye-opening experience. If he is correct, if he nails this, this could be a monster payout for him and anybody that invests with him. And so we're going to look at a lot of this. Now, before we do, make sure you get your free stocks down below from Moomoo. And right now, all you got to do is put $100 in using my link. you got to use my link. Uh, and you're going to get five free stocks worth of 2,000 apiece plus a $50 cash reward coupon. Put five grand in, 15 stocks worth up to 2,000 apiece plus a free share of Tesla or Google. Do recommend this. And get your free stocks over at Weeble as well. $100 deposit will get you up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. And then come on over to the Patreon, folks. We got everything going on. I just bought some stocks. I'm gonna be buying some more here shortly. We got a lot of things going on and you can be a part of a private discord for 1999 members and higher. Uh, we got a lot of things, man, I'm telling you. I think the next big money maker deals in this video and I'm gonna bring it to you ahead of time before I even make my moves, but I'm letting you know the moves I'm considering. I'm letting the family know because we're in this together. We need to be able to take the information that we're seeing from the whales. We need to be able to take the information we're seeing from the credit rating, the, the credit rating agencies like Moody's and Fitch, all those and we need to put it in action we need to sit there and say okay if this is what they're going to do and they're they're broadcasting it then it's time for us to make the moves and try to make bank off of this that's kind of <laughs> funny bank anyways with that being said here we go let's get into it you can see what's going on big short investor michael burry is betting against both the s p 500 
and NASDAQ 100 pulling back from China on top of it. And we know they're having issues over there. And you can say, what do you mean? Well, then they, they, they hit a few things out. Let me see right here. China's central bank unexpectedly cuts rates to support sputtering economy. This was yesterday. And so you're starting to see moves and he's ahead of the game. He sees the issue. So he makes his move. He's, he's, he's cutting away from the China stocks. He's cutting away from a lot of things, adding on bare positions. And so we look, we think, okay, what? And he sold all his banking stocks, folks. And this is why I brought this up right here. He was so far ahead of this. Yell about the guy all you want. He's nailing it right now. I'm telling you, he's nailing it because he made these moves in Q2. It is now Q3. His moves look absolutely spot on. Financial stocks in the U.S. weakened again. Uh, shares of J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all down over 2%. Fitch warned it, it may have to downgrade uh, credit rating of dozens of banks, all right, including J.P. Morgan Chase. Moody's lowered its rating on 10 U.S. banks while putting other big institutions on a watch list. So it's going to happen. This is the snowball effect because the Fed rates continue to stay high. It's, it's hitting a lot of uh, the commercial real estate, and they have exposure to this. In a normal situation, banks are okay with higher rates from the Fed. But because it's, it's crushing the commercial real estate, because the rates are so high and a lot of these small businesses are going to be in trouble, you're seeing issues out there. Regional banks also closing lower. Now I've been, we. this is the beauty of this. I got out of a lot of these positions a little bit ago. We've been just moving into the T-bills the and moving into some of the long dated treasuries, getting the barbell strategy going. And now I think it might be time, and here's the move, to short banks. You have the warnings from the credit agencies you got worries out there of the overall economy. We got commercial real estate in absolute peril. Folks, if this doesn't add up to, hey, the banks might not be all rosy and fuzzy and happy, I don't know what else is. Even if they do run up, I wouldn't expect them to run up like a champ with the Fed continuing to hammer businesses and hammering all the things they're doing with these rates. It could get ugly. And if it does get ugly, Will some of these banks just absolutely collapse down 10, 20, 30%? And so if that is the effect, how can we make money off of that? You got the credit, rating, uh, the credit rating agencies basically screaming, we're gonna downgrade, so prepare. And that tells me a few things. Well, the banks have to be scared to death. They have to be scared to death. And then I thought, well, how can you tell if a bank's scared to death? And should I short these? And this, is this the ultimate short opportunity for this sector? And this is where it came up. The telltale warning for Wall Street is back for the fourth time in 50 years, folks. And this deals with the banks. And what are we talking about? Bigger problem for the U.S. economy and stock market than a short-lived regional banking crisis. Well, it's right down here. This is your, your, your map here. Let's see if I can pull it up in a bigger one here. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to. So we'll just go with this one here. So what you see here is the bank credit. Look at the credit just dropping off. Last time, great. Look at this. The Great Recession. It dropped like this. Then we had back in uh, the dot-com bust. Then we had back in the 70s. We're below that, folks. We're below the 70s. We're below or right. I think we're right at the tip there. Uh, I think we actually broke below the dot-com bust of how much the banks pulled back. We're now seeing that below that point, folks. In other words, in the last 50 years, this is the second worst, I believe, that we have seen in credit being pulled away from businesses. And I said this was gonna be a major issue months ago, right when the Fed was getting riled up and just keeping these rates, I said, you're gonna see massive credit being pulled from the economy. It's gonna knock 25 to 50 basis points off of, uh, it'd be the equivalent of 25 to 50 basis points worth of rate hikes, and we're seeing it. And that you add that to what the Fed's doing, man, it's getting ugly. You wanna know why the Fed doesn't have to raise rates anymore? The banks are doing it for them. They're out there cutting credit to people who need it, and it's at the absolute worst time. Prices are through the roof, greedflation. Companies are trying to get every penny they can out of us. They're making us run up our credit cards. And you can say, well, they're not making us buy stuff. For a lot of people, they are. 
They need food on the table. They got to go to the hospital. They got to pay their car or mortgage payments. And everything, if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, it could go up. A lot of them are fixed like 1% annually, but they've been going up and they didn't plan on that. They didn't know the Fed was going to go wild and send these rates up when they made them. And so now there's a lot of pain out there. And that pain is going to be people walking away from debt, companies walking away from debt, you got commercial real estate that's just going to be abandoned. And who has to, who's going to be on the hook? Banks. And I showed you earlier that the banks are trying to offload all the commercial real estate they can, and they're having troubles doing that. And I did that in another video. Put it all together, folks. You can see the storm clouds are brewing. And you know who saw it? That's right, Michael Burry. He got rid of his banks. He's shorting a lot of the, the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, 100 so you're seeing moves out there being made by these whales and we either learn from them and try and it's just not him either because you got Buffett loading up on treasuries he's not outright shorting the market but he's putting all this he has like what is it uh, if you look at his equities compared to his his cash the cash is up to 147 billion and he has like equities in the 300 and something billion folks that's crazy that's like 30 35 percent of his money in cash that's warren buffett who's supposed to be the best investor out there and he can't find something to buy and he keeps being a net uh a net seller of stocks which is just wild well that that makes me nervous so put it all together that's what i'm looking at and i think the next step it could be to start shorting some of these these banks and i made a good profit off of it sold these stocks for a very nice profit and now i have that in t-bill but it might be able to take that t-bill money move it back into some short positions in these financials because they're they look like they're ready to get absolutely just trounced look and find who has the most commercial real estate which i'm going to go out and look for and find out which banks are on the hook probably for the most and then short them and because that could be something if you don't want to short them don't short them buy some put options then if you and that's a different way of doing it or just stay away from them you can just avoid it and buy the t-bills and be happy but i'm looking at that so if that's interesting to you go ahead click the subscribe button down below because we're in this together i'm going to bring you this knowledge and i'm going to do the best i can with the research you can also join me over at the patreon today and we got a lot of things going on uh, get those free stocks from Moomoo and Weeble as well. Uh, we got we we'll be back because this isn't even done. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.